Jesus is Lord. Say that with me. Jesus is Lord. Mean it in your heart. Jesus is Lord. Make it a prayer. Jesus is Lord. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer, and we're in the middle of a series of teachings on how to heal. Now, whether you are gifted as a healer, and many of you are especially, a lot of people who would never dream they have a gift of healing, you have it. You have it. I'm sure Peter never thought he had the gift of healing. He probably didn't think he had the gift of anything. But he healed thousands of people just by a shadow. I think Paul, after all the hurts and violence that he went through in his life, probably thought he didn't have the gift of healing, but it looks like he did too. You see what I mean? You may have the gift of healing whether you do or not. We're going to get into God's Word, and God's Word will get into you. We'll not only open up the Bible, we'll begin to praise Him, worship Him, and love Him. So would you join with me, please? Father, right now, send the Holy Spirit to us so we might worship in spirit and in truth. We throw you out, Satan, and all your works. We're just sprinkling this holy water to claim the victory we have in baptism. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Jesus, you're the one. You're the holy one. You're the mighty one. Hallelujah, Jesus. Way, truth, and life. Way to the Father, baptizer in the spirit. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you for being Lord. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Savior, Jesus, Lord. Jesus. Oh, Lord, Lord, Thank Lord. You. You are the way and the Jesus truth. is Lord. Jesus 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 is Lord. Send your Spirit. 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 Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray Jesus, now in the name of the Father, Savior. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's ask the Lord's forgiveness right now. If it's so important to receive that forgiveness, that opens us up and God's healing flows through and in us and God's enlightenment, revelation, power, victory just flows right through us. Oh, it's so beautiful if we could just receive and repent. Let's, let's repent right now. Uh, Jesus, you'd like to release the captives, captives from alcohol, captives from homosexuality, captives from fornication and adultery. Jesus, may we let you set us free. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you'd like to open the eyes of the blind, blinded by sin, blinded by apathy, blinded by a life of, of violence and perversion. L Christ, have mercy. Christ. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you'd like to say some good news to the poor, to those who are poor physically and spiritually. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, right now, we just ask you would open us up. Oh, Lord Jesus, just give us a gift of knowledge so that we might be able to pray a prayer that would open people up. Oh, Lord, right now, that particular person trapped in a homosexual relationship, Lord, they know that you're speaking to them right now. They can tell that something's happening. Lord, that particular person who just has a terrible fever, Lord, just, just begin to move. May they sense something's happening inside of them now. Lord, and that one who is so confused. Lord, may they notice something's happening. The weather's changing. Lord, right now, 
Bring us to repentance. Lord, break through. Lord, just open us up. Lord, just bring all the skeletons out of the closet and just remove all those things. In Jesus' name it is done. Amen. Amen. So this, as I said, is our fourth teaching on how to heal as Jesus healed. And we're getting into Mark's gospel. But before we do that, we'd like to read a special passage from Matthew. So open up and receive God's word. A reading from Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 to 30. As Jesus moved on from there, two blind men came after him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he got to the house, the blind men caught up with him, and Jesus said to them, Are you confident I can do this? Yes, Lord, they told him. At that, he touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith, it shall be done to you. And they recovered their sight. And this is the word of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Okay, we're getting into the Gospel of Mark especially, but we wanted to introduce it with this passage from Matthew because a last teaching, I hope you have that. If you missed it, just get it on tape. Last teaching, we were starting into Mark, and we noticed that healing was basically an exercise of authority, of Jesus' authority, in such a way as to open a person up to receive healing by faith. You exercise authority so that you elicit faith or that you build up faith that's not even there yet. You see what I mean? But somehow or other, your exercise of authority has something to do with the other person's faith. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time that's what healing is all about. Most of the time, healing is either just putting somebody who has faith in touch with the healing power of God, and that's very simple. You don't have to do hardly anything. Like, um, oh, there's a passage in Acts of the Apostles where Paul sees this man who is paralyzed, and he just yells at the guy. He, he doesn't say any prayer. He doesn't get into any big deal. I, I might as well give you the exact reference. This is in Acts of the Apostles, and um, let me make sure I got the right passage here. Hmm. Uh-oh. I better look it up quick so I don't make a mistake. Acts of the Apostles and chapter 14 and verse 9. It says, Paul just looked directly at this person and he saw that he had faith to be saved. And Paul just yelled out, Stand up on your feet! And the man jumped up and began to walk around. So you don't have to fool around much when the person has faith. You just plug them in and that's that. You know what I mean? But most of the time, the person doesn't have the faith. And you've got to build up faith in them. Most of the time, what God wants to do for them and where they are, it doesn't line up together. I, I look at it as, as prongs of a, uh, electrical outlets, like plugs. And here's God. He's got this prong. And if you got faith, you, this is your prong, and you just fit just right, and there you go. You're all set. But most of the time, a person doesn't have faith. And so there has to be a changing of this, of this prong. It has to adapt. It has to change around. And then by faith, by the exercise of authority, you change it around so it fits right in. Now, as I said, especially for an unbeliever, for a person who's a believer, but at this point in their life, the Lord is not expecting them to have faith. What, if, the, if this is what the Lord's got for them, and this is where they are, and that's not right, you can be the adapter yourself. Well, they don't even do a thing. You just be the adapter yourself, and then it plugs into you. Because of your faith, they get healed. But that only works for unbelievers or for believers in very uh, exceptional times in your lives. Most of the time, healing is helping a person with a lack of faith to give faith. Using authority to give them the faith, to help them open up. That's what it's all about. And um, that's why this question that Jesus brings forth in, in Matthew 
in, in chapter 9, in verse 28, is, is really practical. Uh, Jesus just says to the fellow, you might say, well, how do you know if the person's got enough faith or not? If they got enough faith, you just yell at them and say, you're healed. And that's why they're healed. Uh, but, but if they don't have enough faith, how, how, do you, uh, how do you know? Well, you ask them. Simple as that. Like Jesus goes up to, the, to this, these two blind men, and he says, are you confident that I can do this? Do you have faith? Do you have faith about this? And they say yes. He says, okay. He touches them, bang. Because of their faith, you're, they're here healed. You see what I mean? Now, of course, a lot of people will say, I have faith, but they don't really have it. But see, you've got to know the condition of that person in order to really minister to them right. Now, we're going to explain this and give many examples of it. And we're going to look once again back into Mark's gospel. And um, let's look at um, Mark and chapter 5, verse 23. Now, there are, there are a number of passages in Mark's gospel where there's uh, people being delivered from demons. Now, setting a person free from demons, delivering them, is, is sometimes overlaps with healing, but uh, we're not dealing with those passages because healing, even though it overlaps with deliverance, is something sp different. I know a lot of teaching on healing kind of go into a lot of the passages about deliverance, but we're on the whole not going to do that, although occasionally we will mention that. But let's look at 5 and 23. Um, this um, synagogue official, his name is Jairus, comes up and says, My little daughter is critically ill. Now listen to this. Please come and lay your hands on her so she may get well and live. Please come and lay your hands on her. This man had observed Jesus healing people. And he noticed that when Jesus put his hands on them, they started believing a lot more than they did before, and then they started receiving healing. And so... He said, I want you to come and lay hands on this girl because if you lay hands on her, I know she's going to open up and receive it. You see? Now, at this time, the girl was not dead. And then they heard the girl was dead, and they said, well, there's no use laying hands on her now because that's not going to elicit faith from her because she's already dead. But Jesus says, uh, just, just let, me, let me do what I need to do here. But before he got there, something else happened. In Mark 5 and 27, there's this woman who has had a hemorrhage for 12 years. She's gone to doctors of every kind and just blew all her money. Does that ring a bell? I know a lot of people listen to this program. They've blown all their money on doctors. We don't have anything against doctors. We're going to talk about doctors in later programs. But sometimes they're just not going to do the job. And don't blow all your money on a doctor when he can't do the job. And, you know, she came up to Jesus. And here's an example of a person who has faith. For a person who has faith, to get them healed, you don't hardly have to do anything. In fact, sometimes they get healed and you don't even know about it until after they get healed. You didn't even pray. You didn't even know they were sick. Now, this is what happened. It says, she heard about Jesus. She came up behind him in the crowd and put her hand to his cloak. Most of the time, the healer takes what God wants to do and connects it with the person, especially the person's faith. But if the person's got so much faith, they'll just plug in themselves without even having a healer in the middle of it. You see what I mean? Now, this is what happened with this, this lady. She didn't even uh, get a healer. She, she just had a direct contact with the Lord. He didn't have to exercise uh, very much authority. He already exercised the authority just by being who he was. And she said... If I just touch his clothing, I'll get well. And right away, right away she got well. You, you see what I mean? But, but Jesus said, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Somebody touch me. And Peter said, everybody's touching you. And Jesus said, I'm not talking about that. Somebody touched me because power went out from me. You see, even though I wouldn't say it's the same as electricity, that is an analogy that has some basis in the Scripture. Okay, let's, let's go on here. And in, and in 5.27, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to move on, 5.34. Jesus says, Daughter, it's your faith that has cured you. Go in peace and be free of this illness. 
He doesn't say, it's my power that has cured you. Of course it's his power, but his power is always there. That's not a variable factor. Well, how did she get in touch with his power? Faith. He didn't have to do anything with her. He just walked down the street and found out about the healing afterwards. You see what I mean? Now, most people don't have that much faith, though. You see what I mean? Especially after 12 years of suffering. And so, very seldom we have a service where people get healed quite like that. Now, if you get a large crowd of people, you're going to be able to heal a bunch of people even if you don't do anything. You know, just because there are a few people who will have faith to get healed immediately. And you don't have to do anything. You can just walk in there and say, how many people got healed by walking in the door here tonight? And they'll have people who put their hands up. And say, well, I guess you don't need me. Well, those people didn't need you, really. But most of them, 90-something percent of them, will not receive healing unless they get some help in, in, in releasing their faith and building up their faith. So very seldom will you find anybody like this. And so uh, then he goes and he finds out the daughter's dead and everybody says, well, she's dead. She's not going to be able to get more faith and say, yes, but in this case, I can have faith for her or her parents can have faith for her. And Jesus, oh, he, he, you see how he exercises authority. We said the main thing about healing is to exercise authority. He goes into this funeral parlor, or at least we would call it a funeral parlor, and he says, get them out of here. Clear this place out. We don't want any of these people in here. Now, you go to a funeral parlor and clear the place out and see if you understand what it means to exercise authority. That takes authority. You might say, well, that's because he was Jesus. Well, we know he was Jesus, but Jesus in those days was just a guy who couldn't hold a job, who didn't have nothing, who was real poor and didn't have an education and was a nobody. You, you see what I mean? And he wasn't clear them out anyway. And then he said, she's not dead, she's asleep. Now I talk about authority. You go into a funeral parlor and say, let's just say it out loud so everybody can hear you. She ain't dead, she's asleep. you got to have a lot of guts to say that. I'll tell you that. And of course, everybody started laughing at him. They started laughing and making fun of him. Then Jesus said, get these people out of here. Okay, the father, the mother, and I'm going to take three in with me. Five plus me, that's it. We're going to get her out of there. Now, that's authority. She, he tells everybody who's coming and who's going, you know. He just directs the whole thing. Then he says, uh, commands that girl, Talitha Kum, and the little girl get up and she gets up. You see what I mean? You've got to exercise authority. You say, how could he do that? I told you, he gets up early in the morning and talks to his father. He stays up late at night and he talks to his father. That's how he does it. He said in John 5, he says, I don't do anything except what the father shows me. I don't say anything except what the Father tells me. Well, how did he know all that stuff from the Father? How, how could it be when he touches a person, they come up? Where does he get the power? Where does he get the knowledge? Where does he get the guts? Where does he get the courage? The relationship with the Father. That's where it's at. You, you know, I say, well, I know it says Jesus exercised authority, so I'm just going to go on into places and just tell everybody what to do and heal everybody. It might not work for you because it ain't just a matter of bossing people around. You've got to have it inside before you can get it outside. You've got to be under authority before you can be in authority. You've got to be able to hear the voice of a living God before you can say something that's got power in it. Do you understand? Okay. And wasn't that fantastic what the Lord is doing? Praise God. Okay, let's, let's look at uh, chapter 6, verse 5. He goes to his hometown. And, of course, these people don't have much faith at all. They just, I told you, they thought he was a bum. They didn't think much of him. And he tried to open them up a little bit, but he prophesied. Now, prophecy is a way to really exercise some powerful authority. And he thought, well, as I prophesy, something will happen inside of those people. And maybe that will open them up and they'll express faith and we'll get some healings here. But they wouldn't accept a prophet. It said, no prophet is without honor except in, his own, except in his native place, among his own kindred, in his own house. So he couldn't do many miracles there. Oh, he cured a few by laying on of hands. I said, there are some people he doesn't expect faith from them. They're not in a position to have any faith. They're an unbeliever. They're in a spot in their life where the Lord doesn't even expect them to have any faith. Well, then he just, he just heals them by his own faith. But, but you see what I mean? There's very few people like that. 
And there's a few people that are got enough faith that you don't even have to do anything. You just tell them they're healed, and that's that. Okay? Remember, I'm glad we're getting into the Word because we've got a lot of ideas about healing that are just made up stuff. Stuff that we've seen, stuff that some psychologist told us, something that's based on personal experience. And not that that's all bad, but I'm telling you, how do you get equipped to do anything? By the Word of God. The Word of God does it. 2 Timothy 3 15. The Word of God will equip you for every good work and make you fully competent. You want to be fully competent in healing? You want to be equipped in healing? Here it is. This is it. That's why I'm glad we're with the Word of God. Okay. Let's look at 656. Now, in the past, in Mark, he says many were healed. In 656, everybody gets healed. I like that. Wherever he put it in appearance, in villages and towns or at crossroads, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him to let them touch just the tassel of his cloak. All who touched him got well. You, you see what I mean? Now, these people, you can see why people would get healed in, law, in big groups. Because, you see, if a bunch of people get healed, isn't that going to increase the faith of the other people? Sure it is. Well, that increases their faith and they're going to get healed, which will increase somebody else's faith and they're going to get healed. And you'll just have a, just a, an ever-accelerating healing. It'll just be more and more and more and more. So in this case, it says everybody got healed, but they said they touched the tassel. Now, if you read the book of Numbers, the tassel is a symbol. I have a tassel here in my vestments here. A tassel is, when you see it, according to the Old Testament, it tells you you're supposed to obey the law of God. Basically, when it touches the tassel, it says, I want to be under authority. Now, if you want to be under authority, you'll get healed. You know how, if you're, if you're not being one of the healers, but you're being one of the healed, you know how you get healed? You, you look for a command. Because you get healed by an exercise of authority, so you look for a command that you obey. That's how you, that's how you get healed. All right. Let's look at... 733. We're in Mark chapter 7, verse 33. Here's this death mute. And they, they bring this man, and he also has a speech impediment, and they ask Jesus to lay his hand on the man. Now, the fact that they brought the man kind of gives you an indication that the man was lacking faith. Notice the man could talk, only not very well, uh, but he could see and he couldn't hear. But just because he couldn't hear and couldn't talk real well, he could go up there to Jesus with no problem. And he could get his message across. He could talk a little bit. But see, the problem is he's probably lacking faith. And he wouldn't come unless those other people brought him. So when, when these people come up to Jesus and say, just lay your hand on him and he'll get better, Jesus says, you're wrong. He doesn't have the faith for that. I'm going to have to take him aside, and we're going to have to build his faith first before I touch him. So he takes the man aside, and he goes through quite a number of things. He, he says, um, first he, he, um, he takes him aside, and he puts his fingers in the man's ears. Now, I'm sure when Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears, the man started experiencing something. The man started opening up, started growing in faith. And then Jesus, spitting, touched his tongue. Now that has a, has a significance of communicating life. The, the Hebrew would certainly understand that. And I'm sure as he did that, the man felt something spiritual happening inside of him. And then Jesus looked up to heaven, and as the man sees Jesus looking up to heaven, and then Jesus starts groaning, and he says, Ephatha, be open. Notice it's not a prayer, it's a command. He commands that man's mouth to open up. He commands that man's ears to open up, and they open up. And he could speak plainly. But you see, Jesus, if he would have just put his hands on him right away, it wouldn't have worked. You, you can lead a person up here and say, just put your hands on him and heal him. Uh, for a lot of people, that ain't going to work for them. Not right away. You have to take them aside. You have to do a number of things. Then you put your hands on them and it'll work. You see what I mean? We say, well, how do you know when they're ready? When they're ready? How do you know if, they, if all you've got to do is just make contact and that's all there is to it? How do you know if they're just on the verge of expressing their faith or they've got a lot to go? God tells you. You know, God tells you. That's how you find out. You just spend that time in prayer, basically. 825. Chapter 8 and 25. Here's the blind man at, at Bethsaida. And... Um, this man, 
has um, uh, been, he was brought too. So that tells you probably the man didn't have enough faith. Then Jesus takes him aside too. Jesus said, I have to work with this guy a little bit more. Then he uses his spit, puts it on his eyes. Then he says, can you see anything? And the man says, I can see people, but they're like walking trees. Jesus says, I think you need more faith here. And then he prays again. And uh, he doesn't pray again, sorry. But he lays hands on his eyes a second time, and that does it. Do you see how this works? Do you see it's a matter of exercising authority so as to elicit or build faith and once that's there, the contact is there with the healing power of God and that pretty well takes care of it. All right? Well, that's most of Mark's gospel. That's not everything, but that's most of it. And you can take these revelations into personal practice and you're going to just see a lot of people receive the healing power of God. Okay, let's pray right now. Oh, Lord, may we have such a relationship with you. May we be under your authority so that we can be in authority. May we hear you so we can speak in your name. Lord, may we know whether a person's ready or what to do to get them ready or how to exercise authority to build up faith. Lord, do this in our lives. Use us for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.